Uh, and thanks to you at home for joining us this hour. Super happy to have you here. There's lots going on in the news tonight. Lots to get to. Uh, do, do you remember when Jared Kushner lost his security clearance? Jared Kushner is the president's son-in-law. He is married to the president's daughter, Ivanka. Mr. Kushner still works in the White House. He still has uh, the White House senior advisor title that he has had ever since uh, he first got to D.C. But Mr. Kushner apparently is no longer allowed access to any classified materials. Uh, because he was not able to get a security clearance. One of the reported concerns about his security clearance application uh, were these repeated allegations that he was mixing conversations about the needs of his family's real estate business with conversations he was having about U.S. government policy as a White House advisor. I mean, that's the kind of thing that can keep you from getting a security clearance, right? If you are giving business owners or donors or foreign governments the impression that if they financially help out your family business, that might give them an edge when it comes to getting what they want from the U.S. government, like, that's not okay. You can't get a clearance if that's the impression that you're, you're giving people. I mean, and, and then there's the darker version of, of that possibility, right? Not only could you be offering people... Uh, sort of inducements, right? I, I can get, I can hook you up with some U.S. government policy that you might like if you pay me. It, that, that could also be construed as a threat. The converse is also true, right? You could also be creating the impression that basically you're extorting people for money, right? You know, nice company, nice little country you've got there. Shame if something happened to it. Did I mention that my family real estate business needs some new investors? Right? If, if you are mixing your personal business needs with discussions about U.S. government policy, you can either be offering something good or you can be threatening something bad unless somebody pays up and pays your family. That, you know, soliciting of a bribe, that extortion, um, is basically what was alleged by the government of Qatar about Jared Kushner. Uh, last year, the Trump administration surprised everyone when, when President Trump, with no warning, came out very strongly against the nation of Qatar. He called Qatar uh, supporters of terrorism. He came out in support of a surprise blockade that was launched against Qatar by other Middle Eastern states. Everybody was like, hey, what now? What just happened? We've got thousands of U.S. military personnel based in Qatar. It's, it's our biggest outpost in the Middle East. CENTCOM literally has their headquarters in Qatar. Whether you like Qatar as a country or you don't, even if you can't quite remember how to pronounce the place, I mean, they are an active and important U.S. ally in that region, and they have been for some time. So why did President Trump all of a sudden last year, uh, without warning, start denouncing them? Why did he reportedly greenlight this blockade against them by neighboring countries? That radical turn in U.S. policy toward Qatar was so fast and so drastic that the rest of the U.S. government apparently didn't even know it was happening while it was happening. Um, last June, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson actually made a formal statement denouncing that blockade against our ally, Qatar. But then the president, that same day, came right out and contradicted Rex Tillerson and said, no, no, actually, it's U.S. policy that we are in favor of that blockade. It was just really strange. Where did that come from? What was the urgency there? Why that 180 degree turn against Qatar? Well, Qatar said at the time that they thought they knew why that was happening. Qatari officials told reporters at the time that they suspected it might have had something to do with the fact that they had just turned down Jared Kushner's dad when Jared Kushner's dad came to the Qataris and asked them for a big investment in the Kushner family real estate business to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, Kushner companies initially denied that Jared's dad had even taken a meeting with the Qataris, but then they later admitted actually he had. Qatar says that Charles Kushner made the ask. He asked that Qatar's uh, sovereign wealth fund put money into the Kushner family's biggest real estate screw-up, a big Manhattan office tower that the Kushner family bought, but they couldn't afford. It has since turned into a giant money pit for the family and their company. Uh, Jared Kushner's dad reportedly went to the Qataris and asked them for a big investment, basically to bail the Kushner family out. When it comes to that skyscraper, the Qataris said they turned Jared Kushner's dad down. They said no, and then boom, just a few weeks later, Jared Kushner, then the White House point man on the Middle East, presided over this radical change in U.S. policy against Qatar. Now, 
we don't know if those two things are linked. We don't know if the White House, uh, the White House's radical policy sh shift against Qatar was revenge by Jared Kushner for Qatar refusing to pay up to his dad. But that's where things stood before today. Now, the whole deal has swung back the other way. So now you can see this dynamic at work from a whole different angle and, and, and draw your own conclusions. Um, for whatever reason, President Trump and the, and, and the White House more broadly, they softened their stance on Qatar within the last few weeks. After a surprise, denouncing Qatar last year as a funder of terrorism at a very high level, after announcing that the U.S. would support this shock blockade of that country by its neighbors. A few weeks ago, Trump started talking about Qatar as an ally again. The second week of April, President Trump hosted the Emir of Qatar at the White House. He didn't call him a terrorist at all, despite all of that criticism last year. President Trump hosting the Emir of Qatar actually said it was a great honor to have him at the White House. He called him a, quote, friend of mine. He said he was a great gentleman. He said, quote, there are a lot of good things happening. We're working very well together. Then uh, a couple of weeks later, late last month, uh, the new Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, came out and said, uh, yeah, actually, we don't support that blockade against Qatar anymore. Never mind what we said last year, we've changed our mind now. Quote, Pompeo's message to Saudis, enough is enough. Stop Qatar blockade. Let's just step back from this a second. We've got a big military base in Qatar. It's the headquarters of CENTCOM. We've got friendly relations, they're an ally. We don't know what caused this White House and this president to turn suddenly hostile against Qatar last year. But we know that sudden turn toward hostility followed almost immediately, that country turning down an investment request from Jared's family. A and we know that, rightly or wrongly, what the Qataris think happened there is that Jared changed White House policy against them to punish them for not paying off his family. So Qatari officials have explained to U.S. reporters. Well, now, now we've had sort of just as sudden a switch back to Qatar once again being treated back in an ally, uh, tre treated, treated as an ally. They're back in America's good graces. The president is hosting the emir of Qatar at the White House, calling him a friend, dropping all the terrorism complaints, and directing Qatar's neighbors to, to stop with that blockade after all. Why the switch back? Here's the headline. Kushner's near deal with Qatar-linked company for troubled tower. This is today. The New York Times first to report today that Jared's dad, Carl, Charles Kushner, has convinced Qatar to come through after all with a big investment, basically a bailout for the Kushner family real estate company and that skyscraper they bought that they really can't afford. This deal they have reportedly all but sealed is with Brookfield Properties. As the Times puts it today, quote, Brookfield has financial ties to the government of Qatar. The Qatar Investment Authority is the second largest shareholder in Brookfield Properties, ranking only behind Brookfield's parent company. Uh, Bloomberg News puts an even finer point on it, noting that the Kushner family is actually doing this deal with a specific unit of Brookfield. And the single largest owner of that unit is Qatar the Qatar Investment Authority, which invests on behalf of Qatar's government. So who says big city real estate has to be complicated? Or, or foreign policy, for that matter. Qatar tells the Kushner family real estate company, no, we're not going to give you hundreds of millions of dollars to bail you out of your failing skyscraper in Midtown. U.S. policy towards Qatar almost immediately turns suddenly and radically hostile against Qatar. Qatar freaks out a little bit scrambles a little bit. Cutter decides, okay, we'll take another look at the Kushner family real estate company's failing skyscraper. And they decide, <clears throat> actually, on second thought, maybe we really do want to invest. Open checkbook, swivel wrist, here's your money. And everybody looking for an explanation for why U.S. policy toward Cutter just got real friendly again, without explanation. Everybody looking at that suddenly remembers, oh yeah, that's why Jared lost his security clearance. Even if this isn't the selling of US foreign policy, 
even if this isn't the blatant shakedown and extortion of a U.S. ally, shaking down a country for payments to the family of a government official under the threat of that country losing its favored status with the U.S. government? Even if, as all parties involved insist today, even if this duet of private money and public policy is just a coincidence, and this definitely isn't bribery and quid pro quo, well, the problem is that it certainly looks like it is. And for the nation of Qatar, their dealings with the U.S. government and with the Kushner real estate company have certainly made them think that it is. That the only way their country can regain favored status is to submit to extortion, to pay the bribe. And so, no, you, you, you can't get a security clearance, right? Not, not if you've created the perception that that is how this White House does business now. You can't have a security clearance then. But you can apparently keep your White House job. And your family can definitely, definitely get paid big time today. So you would think that would be the all-encompassing big news of the day today, right? Honestly, in any other 10-year period of American politics, that could conceivably be a contender for the biggest White House scandal in the decade. But here in this new life we're all living now, the possible raffling off of U.S. US foreign policy for the price of the, uh, a, 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 the president's family's skyscraper mortgage payment, I mean, <laughs> in this life we're in now, that's a story we've got to get to and make sure we understand, but then we've got to keep going. Move on, sister, because there's more coming down the pike. BuzzFeed, for example, broke significant new news today on a financial tie between the president and Russia. A tie that is much more significant than anything that's been previously reported. Uh, a tie that overlapped with Mr. Trump's time running for president. A tie that the FBI has reportedly been investigating. And the real bombshell in this new BuzzFeed reporting is that this financial dealing involving the president is reported to have involved individuals in Russia who personally had knowledge of or who helped carry out the Russian government attack on our election in 2016, when Russia was intervening in that election to try to help Trump win. Anthony Cormier is one of the two BuzzFeed reporters uh, who broke that big story today. He's going to be here with us live in just a minute to talk about that. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.